too early. It's almost seven. This will be year number eight at the CrossFit Games. Finished third twice and first last year. I mean, I would say really the one difference was I wasn't injured. You'd be surprised that in the years past how little I trained leading up to the CrossFit Games. Sometimes when my back was really bad, I trained you know, one time a day on the bike because that's about all I could do. I did biking and push-ups or biking and strict pull-ups. Got another one. Got a whole nother left. <clears throat> going 49. Never mind. I don't have to pee. Give me one minute. And then I just went out there and I competed. Like I was afraid to do anything in the gym because I would hurt myself. So I was really healthy going in. I was mentally focused. A lot more hungry than I was in years past. I kind of feel like I switched to a different gear that I'm kind of sitting in now and I just feel good going into this year again. Uh, it's just a different mindset. You guys all want to run this last one one more? Hey, why one more? Make it even 30. No. I was pretty nervous because we didn't know how many we were going to do going into it. Did you hear the guy on the run? He was like, holy crap, you guys are the biggest crap. But he said the S word instead of crap. <laughs> Did you guys see that one guy that's running? He's, have you seen him? He's the legend of Oak Grove. He just keeps running. Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I usually have like some idea of what I want to do, but I want to just focus on a lot more cardio and lungs today. 2014, I was full-time in school at UVM. That summer, I was working a summer internship at an aerospace company here in Vermont. Ah, fuck. In 2015, full-time student for one semester, went part-time for the other semester to focus more on CrossFit. 2016, just CrossFit. No, no, I do not have an addiction to suffering. I have an addiction to what the product of suffering is. Same way as anything I do in life. Like When I was in school, I would literally sit in the library for 10 hours on a Saturday. I would read the textbook cover to cover. When I'd finish a chapter, if I couldn't tell you every single law that was in there or every single formula, I would go back and read it again. And it's not because I was addicted to reading the textbook. It was because I was addicted to the day that we got our exams and the exam wasn't challenging. That's, that's the feeling I chase. Like getting, getting your test score back and you have the highest grade in the class, that's a good feeling. Ugh. When I'm downstairs by myself and no one else is around, no one else is watching, that's when the work gets put in. I don't love doing rowing intervals or max out squats. That shit hurts. But the day you show up to exams and you put up the top time, that's the feeling I chase. Coffee with progenics and some coconut oil. And that's about it. We'll have a, we'll go to Burrito Place for lunch. That'll be my first meal probably. I'm just not too hungry after that run. <laughs> Come on, let's go. We're supposed to go outside. I love coaching. It's like, that's why I started the gym. Like I wanted to help people. I wanted to, you know, people come in, they have this goal and they want to achieve. And you can, if you can help them in any way or you can assist them in any way, uh, that's awesome. I mean, that's something that everybody, I feel like, should strive to help others. And that's across the gym, like, gave you a great opportunity to do that. And that's all you got to do is care about every single person that walks in the door, like they're your best friend. That's a little long, so shorten that up a little bit. That's okay, you're getting it. That's why we practice, right? Job. They end up being your you know best friends. It's awesome. It's that's just what I love to do. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, Ben's a great coach. We have a very small gym and we had like 20 people in that class. I mean it's you know, he, and I think at some point during the class he addressed 
a few things with everybody and you know to everybody individually. But as you dip, keeping those elbows up, right? Because they don't they're wanting to drop a little bit. If you can motivate or inspire one person, you can change their life. That's that's what it's all about. Hold that bar up there, all right? Never run with Ben when you don't know the workout. <laughs> no. How often does Ben sucker you guys into just doing stuff like that? Every day. Every day. Yeah, every day. <laughs> Three times a day, every day. Yeah. We usually run twice, uh, twice a week, and then usually work out a lot. A lot. Yeah. Those are probably just as bad as the runs. So after a workout like that, what what hurts the most? It's my right calf. <laughs> Very specific. Yeah. No, it's just my calves are tight. That's about it. Uh, I live. <laughs> I live with my parents in the house I grew up in. I got maple brown sugar, cinnamon and spice. Get at me. I'll usually do this, work out a little bit, and then, and then have my like big meal. I live as close to possible, as expense free as I can. Between sponsors and prize money, make my living. Oh, I feel bad. I would turn on, I would turn on the TV and just like pretend it ain't not here. TV's just for decoration. Like, I'm just, this is it. <laughs> There's no cable. So I just have Netflix and that quit working. So it's just kind of like, eh, all right. Like, bullet doesn't do anything unless it's 45, right? Duh. I used to take 10% of any prize money and buy myself something nice, something that I wouldn't normally buy myself. I don't live too luxuriously. I bought a Roomba a little while ago. I'm pretty luxurious. <laughs> that kind of stopped. <laughs> I just found myself buying stuff. I was like, why did I just buy a watch? I've never worn a watch. Like, I, I didn't really know how to do it. So like, I just put them up the trips I've been purely for CrossFit. So I got a bunch out there, a couple down here. I hope we fill that up a little bit. Because I look at any money that I earned during my CrossFit career as like kind of bonus money. I don't consider it work. So it's people just paying me to have fun, I guess. Because I'm, I'm doing something that I genuinely love. So like today was a long warm up, 13 minutes. So although we're in the same house, he has his own apartment. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think some of the nicest moments are when his country music turns on, starts blaring. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. He's going to be training downstairs. I, I love it. Was a, he was a fun kid, he, very adventurous. I remember at a young age, I had to make him a cushioned helmet that went around his head. So when he pulled up to the coffee table and then let go, he'd just fall backwards because mission accomplished. He got what he wanted and, uh, and now he's moving on to something else. I remember the first time he really kind of started getting to fitness was he was doing push-ups outside and he wanted to take his mind off of his arms hurting. So he gives me this plastic golf club and says, Alec, hit me in the legs as hard as you can while he's doing push-ups. And so <laughs> I take this plastic golf club and just I'm whacking him in the legs and he's like still doing his push-ups, trying to get like take his mind off of his arms hurting. I really legitimately don't remember that. Did he actually tell a story like that? Did he dream of that? Because I have never heard of that in my entire life. I thought he was crazy. Like he just wanted to work out all the time and it's been it's been cool watching him progress. I don't know, it sounds like something I might do, but I don't remember it. <laughs> Matt's always had the competitive spirit. It doesn't matter what he's gone into. I remember the end of the season at Sugarbush, he was doing a downhill aerial competition. So somebody came down and did a backflip, so then Matt came down and did a full layout. And then we heard some girls get off the lifts and said, that last kid's going to do a double back. 
you know, we just, oh no, it better not be mad. He's never attempted that in his life. He's never done it, he's never tried it. And he's going to break his neck, you know. And sure enough, he came off the jump and up he goes and double back flip and he lands. And I, I just, I went over to him afterwards. I said, congratulations, Matt, that was wonderful. But whatever, ever goes on in your mind to make you even think you could do that. He said, you know, Dad, that I did a back layout and so did another guy. And he said, there's no such thing as a one and a half. So he said, I just did the double because he just wanted to win so badly. And at the end of the day, he was competing for a snowboard and he's not even a snowboarder, he's a skier. Just a lot of times he would just, it would just be Ben in the garage working out by himself. I don't think there's ever going to be anybody like him again because he really taught himself everything. He taught himself yeah. how to snatch, he taught himself how to clean jerk. And it's all, you know, from the CrossFit videos that you guys done. I mean, it's really, honestly, he would watch for hours and hours and hours. He would take video of him from over there, and then he would put his video up against, like, you know, the Russian Olympic lifter versus the American Olympic lifter. And he would go frame by frame and see when he was forward, when he was back, when he was on his heels, when he, you know. I, and it was just, you know, com constant analyzing the stuff. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. see some of the old videos where he's two inches away from the fridge when he gets a snatch up, or, you know, I mean, that fridge has got a lot of dents on the bottom of it from heels and kicks and, you know, misses that, you know, weren't, wasn't real happy about, but. A lot of time out here. Candy and I always had one concern when he was weightlifting. Weightlifters just do not work cardio. And I remember meeting him at one of his meets and the elevators were down so we took the stairs. And actually Candy and I were not huffing and puffing at the top of the stairs and he was. He was out of breath, huffing and puffing and I said, my gosh, how can this be healthy? And I think CrossFit is one thing that's really worked cardio for him. He's made a complete turnaround when it comes to what, what he came into CrossFit with and what he has today, cardio-wise. Just hasn't grown in yet all the way. I'm sure it'll grow in a little bit, it's just not there yet. <laughs> Any competition, anytime that I compete, I want to win. It wasn't a fluke last year. I train, if not harder than anybody else out there every single day, all year. It's just a matter of me staying healthy and I feel like I have a shot to win any time that I go to the game. So that's why I've always thought that in the past. And, you know, this year is absolutely no different. I'm feeling better than I've ever felt. The day I got home from the 2015 games, I bought one of the pigs from the games. Literally, I don't think I touched it for like a month or two, purely just because I was like scared. It's like, what? what if the reason is I'm just not good enough? And then one night I was just like, you know what, screw it. Going to the gym late at night by myself, turn on the one light, move the pig out into the middle of the room and just started flipping it. And it got to the point where I was like going late at night, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do 60 flips for time, do 100 flips for time. And it was like an every Sunday night type thing. And I would just flip it, flip it, flip it. Just to make sure that if that comes up again, I'm as prepared as I can be for it. No, the regionals is not fun at all. Regionals is like the, the competition you kind of have to do and you just got to get it over with. I mean, it's fun winning the regionals, but it's not fun like competing at the regionals. It's very stressful because it's like one slip up and that event could be a, a dramatic change in your whole weekend. You know how the last event is, people jumping all over the leaderboard at the end. So I was just, I was just lucky that I wasn't in that like third through sixth range like I was in the year before. So it was nice to push in the early in the weekend and have that little bump to sit on for the last day. No, no, I wasn't trying to make a statement at regionals. I was just, I was angry. <laughs> There's a handful of guys in the Northeast region that have 300 pound snatches. And so I'm just kind of looking at it like, like they're, they're here to, to beat me. And I'm not gonna let that shit happen. All those guys showing up to the games, they're there to win. And to win, they, they gotta beat everyone else, and I'm one of those people that they have to beat. And for me, that's how I pay my bills. So I look at it like they're, they're trying to take it from me. It's 
Are you going to win the game this year? Of course, I am. I, I think so. Yeah, I have a feeling. <coughs> okay. so. I mean, you know, we believe, so. Um, I felt it last year. Yeah, Ben will win the games this year, for sure. Matt is the most competitive guy I've ever met. Matt suffers more than anybody else I know in training. Matt trains his weaknesses and adapts to training faster than anybody else I've ever seen. Those three things are by far and away facts. Is he capable of winning the games? I, I might be a very partial, but I think he is. I know he's got an inner drive that's going to work him through anything they throw at him. Last year was the first year he competed healthy. Uh, the year before that, he twisted his ankle. The year before that, had knee surgery. So it's always been little things that have kept him back. Uh, last year he was healthy, this year he's healthy. A lot of it's psychological as well, and uh, I've never seen that in such a positive psychological state. I really think he's out with with a vengeance this year. I hope he can be incredibly proud of whatever he does this year and where he places. Does he want to win? Absolutely. Would we love to see him win? <laughs> Absolutely. But we're incredibly proud of him. All year, has been for the games. Just just from the numbers I've been putting up, the consistency I've been putting up, I am a much, much better athlete than I was last year. I'm lifting more, my cardio's better, I'm healthier, my mental game is stronger. So whatever the other guys bring, that's on them. This year, my year has revolved around CrossFit training for the 2016 games. I, I think I'm going to win the, the CrossFit Games this year. I love the games. I love it. I show up and I'm like, bring it on, Dave. Like, seriously, like, it's cool. I love the surprises. The harder, the better, and it, hopefully it's raining. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I love. I don't, I don't know. I'm weird. The challenge, I'm telling you. You gotta be driven. You can't be motivated by like the money. You can't be motivated by the fans. Like it's awesome, sure. You gotta be internally motivated. You gotta love the challenge and you gotta just put your head down and work through it. The harder the better. What, what are those things? Don't take that out of context. You're gonna to go to the games and you're gonna see your competitors like almost passing out next year. <laughs> I saw people carried off in stretchers last year. You know, you gotta expect that. You gotta know that whatever you do today in training, you have to push yourself to the absolute max capacity because in, in the competition floor, you don't wanna be that person that's carried off on a stretcher. You're gonna be pushed physically, you're gonna be pushed mentally beyond your capacity. Like you're not gonna think you can go on and do another event, not just for the next one day, but like for multiple days. If they're gonna test the fittest on earth, it's gotta be a freaking grueling test. You know, it's gotta be challenging. It's gotta push you not only physically but mentally, and it does it every year. And it's that's I don't I enjoy it.